Welcome to the new series from Performance Works International, Guest Practices. I'm Jeremy Blaine, CEO of Performance Works International, and I'll be running a series of video casts with special guests who have a story to tell from both business and life experiences. The conversations are designed to explore their journey, uncovering new ideas, innovations, and next practices that we can all learn from and be inspired by. Today I'm joined by Andy Boothman, tech entrepreneur, founder and CEO of Dress Code Shirts among other businesses. Dress codes inspired by tech and each shirt is available with smart tech built into it. It's all about digital design. They develop unique patterns using icons and other techie elements, create beautiful shirts, high fashion shirts in fact, some louder than others as Andy will tell you. But what they've also done is create the world's first smart shirt featuring cash cuff technology, taking contactless payment to a whole new level. No wallet, no phone, no app required, direct contactless payment from your sleeve. Live it, love it and wear it, as in IT of course. Andy's other business, Busy as a Bee, is a marketing agency focused around personal relationships, working with the right people on behalf of their customers to really understand the need, direct the budget in the right way, leverage technology so that the message gets out there to the right target audience in the right method and the right way. And his approach is simple. He works closely with his clients to co-create solutions, be that marketing or be that shirt. So I'm delighted to welcome him to this video cast and I wanna find out more about this great cash cuff technology. Hi and good morning Andy, how are you? I'm really well Jeremy, thank you. Nice to be with you today. Well thanks very much for joining us, so let's get straight into it. I've talked a little bit about you and your businesses and how you have innovated, so just maybe introduce yourself and uh, two of those, the dress code business and busy as a bee for us. Sure. Good morning everybody, I'm Andy Boothman. Uh, As Jeremy has just said, a couple of businesses that I run probably best known at the moment for Dress Code Shirts, which is an online shirt design and retail business. Um, Historically, and kind of backing that up, is Busy As A B, which is my design and branding business. That's been going 22, nearly 23 years now, my word. Wow, 23 23 years and uh, still going strong. And yeah. you, you really are at the forefront of innovation and, and I just found it fascinating and really wanted you on this video cast. And once he asks you a real key question going forward, uh, particularly as a business leader, how did adopting digital as a leader of your business, first of all, help you reimagine, uh, particularly, let's say, dress code and yeah. the core product that you have? Um, to a digitally enable it, but at the same time, remaining that strong human touch, which is all about the business really internally and with your customers. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a really, really good um, point. For me, with dress code, digital was the only way forward. Um, I never considered anything other, to be honest, just because we could already see um, things migrating in that space you know digital first has become the norm for many consumers now um, they they wouldn't you know if you're looking at making a considered purchase you're going to do any sort of research around that online first and foremost it's unlikely someone's going to go to the trouble of visiting physical premises to to scope stuff out and things like that so that just felt like a very very natural thing um i kind of like all of these things when you're first sort of got the idea and are um, exploring idea exploring concepts i should say you you think into yourself this feels right in my gut but how do i kind of validate it so i did speak to a, a friend who's in data and analytics and said look this is the concept tell me what's and all am i mad or is there so is there kind of something there and um we worked together and did a piece to look at audience segmentation and what was going on in different uh, sectors and on different platforms to ensure that there were people who were interested and that that would connect with what we perceived to be the brand values from that very early sort of stage. So certainly data is a wonderful thing. We've got ready access to tons and tons of 
of it um, these days. There's never been quicker and easier ways to validate any of your thinking processes. But putting my um, branding experience hat on, one of the things that I guess I've found a lot over the years is that many, many businesses are going purely on gut instinct. There's no data behind it. There's no science that actually says this is what customers want. Um, it's, it's just purely, oh, we think this will work. And sometimes that comes off, which is wonderful, but it's, it's a risky maneuver. And um, why, why would you do that when you can look at the process end to end and say, these are, these are the people, these are where they are. We can offer this in that space and you know, embrace all of the, the kind of automation and digital technology that allows you to do that with ease, as opposed to kind of reacting very much um, off the hoof and, and being very, you know, you could be very busy, but not actually producing very much because you know, you're very, very hands-on. Um, so yeah, that, that was in a, in a bit of a rambling answer, but I um, <laughs> hope that kind of gives you a few of the bits. <laughs> Yeah, it, well, it does actually. And, and you know, you mentioned a point about being data driven on this. And this is a really key point right now. Data di driven decision making. It's about speed, agility, all of those kind of things. And you can see how that's played a very, very big part in, in this first innovation of yours. I presume you're wearing one of those now, are you? I am, yeah. The, the cash cuff is what you're referring to. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tell so us a bit about that. So um, the world of wearables is a really fast moving space. Very, very interesting for, for us and for me in particular. Um, just, just love it. I think, you know, this, this, the, the opportunities here are absolutely immense. But um, following the launch of Descode, it had always been my kind of vision that we would create some sort of wearable. Um, the biggest issue you've got around wearables at, the, at this moment in time is the kind of fall off rates are just astronomic. You look at Fitbits and things like that and people stick with it for around about 10 to 12 weeks and then it just is gone. Um, so how, did we, how do we get involved? How do we come up with something that's got genuine added value for people? Well, we've done our research. We had our uh, personas, our audience data, et cetera, and started looking at what was it that was common across all of those that would be of help and how can a shirt actually offer something that's going to be meaningful to, to these people because we've got the data that's great tells us that you know this is what these people want but equally we've got to do something that's human and you know if we don't bring those two together then forget it really you know there's been many many examples in the past of, of fantastically innovative pieces of tech when we think back to Betamax and VHS, for example, you know, um, the, the pure the craziness of, of all of that and the way that it played out. So it's how do we join those bits? And um, went back to the to the data and looked through to see what was common. And we, we started to think about the really, really small parts of people's day. So what would it be that people were doing as they were going to the office on a lunchtime after work? Um, times when you've still got your your shirt on, your clothes on. So how could that help you? Um, and the thing that came out in the data is there was a lot of small transactions that were happening during the day, whether that be just paying to get on the, the bus tube, um, to pick up newspapers, coffees, a drink after work, you know, snacks and things at lunchtime, lots and lots of small transactions. And um, it just kind of got us thinking, I wonder if there's a way that we can kind of take some of that contactless technology and build it into the shirt um so i started looking around and it's a a very interesting uh, place is fintech you know that i mentioned wearables moving fast fintech and the banking models are going through enormous innovation at the moment um many many new fully digital banks that are completely kind of eclipsing the traditional high street ones in terms of service and what customers want um, and the, the kind of way in which people are embracing this as well. So it was like, right, there's a definite appetite there. So we found um, the right technology, found a way of actually getting it so that it's, it's in here all the time and, it, and it's safe, because that's, that's always been the big, the big thing for people. Um, and we brought that together. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's been amazing. The reaction is, is it's fantastic from customers, but it's also when you actually use it, the, the reaction from the retailers is always like, whoa, 
<laughs> what? And you're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, and then, you know, pre kind of COVID, you would, you would start showing them and they'd be like, oh, wow, that's cool. And fantastic conversation piece, always, absolutely always. And, and that's been a really big part of the dress code sort of philosophy. Um, clothes are a really important part of expressing our personality. And the designs that we're creating have got a lot to say and are great ways of expressing some of that. And if you can then take that to another level with some inbuilt physical tech there, then it's just like, you know, it kind of double tick, shall we say, for, for our customers. So that's, that was where that all came from. That's a, well, hey, it's just so cool, Andy. <laughs> I mean, really. It's like, so get, get, just pretend your camera then is, your, is, the, is the terminal. What would you yeah. do? Go on. Literally, you just, I would just, if that was, I would just hold that within about um, two inches of yeah. the payment terminal and in exactly the same way you would have done with your card or anything like that, you've, you've paid. Um, but you don't have to get your phone out, which I think is a you know, yeah. really, really important thing because there's places where you might be just wanting to get a drink where if you want mm. to be getting a device out that's potentially worth a thousand pounds to pay for something that's one pound, one pound fifty. Yeah, exactly. I don't think you do. So, um, you know, there's, there's lots of, lots of things that are great about you don't have to go searching around for cards um as long as you've got your shirt on it's it's all there and everything reports back to your phone ultimately as well so if you are you're concerned about anything that you get a full report of any spending and because it's a pay forward system you can actually cap what you spend as well so mm. you know, it's not as though there's credit card details on there and someone's going to be able to go out and spend mm. thousands um it's yeah it's 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 yeah, you know, I'm going to say this now because it's my product, but it is it is great, and the, the reaction from customers has been absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, really, it really has. Great, great, great. So I love it. So keep your shirt on, then. That's the <laughs> that's the big message. Um, I can imagine it on the tube actually in London. You know, can't you just kind of placing your hand down and people looking around saying, "Where do I get one of those?" Great model, I have to say. Yeah. And. Uh, and I actually like, I mean, I really like the fact that you brought together, as you say, it's the human touch with the digital as well. You mentioned that, didn't you? Yeah, it's, it, you know, really, really important. The, the digital processes that we have around us are only any good if it brings value to your day and makes things, you know, sweeter in some way, shape or form. Um, and I think we're in an interesting place right now with where the phone is at, because that is, that is probably... Out, um, overstep the mark of what it should be doing in terms of what, what's now referred to as digital distraction. Um, Cashcuff is is in that place as well in terms of kind of helping take away some of that distraction. I think we're going to get a, a kind of switching of power, shall we say, from phone into doing other things and clothes in my mind and from the kind of work that we're doing, I believe are a really, really strong part of where that uh, innovation will come and move across because there's the scope to do things with your clothing is massive absolutely massive well that's that's a really that's a really big statement as well is that this you know this is almost ushering in it could be we could be seeing the the end of the phone as the be all and end all and and actually having fit for purpose devices that can be of course linked to one great ecosystem I suppose that would be the advent of the internet of things when it all comes together. But having that vision of where this could possibly go really helps, which actually brings me to, to a, a another point, because when you talk about this, you're on it, you're embracing the data, you're embracing digital, you understand the importance of the human touch, but not all leaders are being so successful as they're going through so-called digital transformation particularly as we went through the recent pandemic and the the almost forced the issue for many so based on your own journey and continuing journey of course mm. what would your advice be to leaders who have been or still are struggling to transform their businesses into you know a digitally enabled innovative uh, agile and flexible organization for the era that we're living in well first and foremost as you've just said i think if you haven't embraced digital then you've got a big big problem really big problem going forward because you know where possibly pre-covid you might have got away with this for a little bit longer the the, the lockdown and everything else has accelerated the process forward at an incredible pace that i don't think any of us would have been able to foresee and it would have taken something like this to speed it up but if you haven't got it you, you got to get it basically um i think the other thing that i would kind of bring into 
the, the digital first thing is also mindset for whoever those business leaders are and that 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 kind of constant innovation piece and you know that is where digital really comes into its own because the ability that those tools bring us the, the speed at which we can realize ideas and concepts with minimal overheads you know we're not talking about vast amounts of investment you can do these things really quickly almost on the fly sometimes and say right let's just try that and see if we can get proof of concept for it you know processes that historically might have taken 18 months two years you can put it out there in a matter of days and because you've got data around your audience and your, your segmentation and things like that you can try different things in front of different people measure it and you know it's it's amazing why would you not want to do that when when it's all there and it's readily available and, and like i say it doesn't cost the earth to have access to these things it is there and it's just a case of of making good use of it really and uh, you know what you mentioned is a really interesting point there is speed trumping size is like it we should be thinking about how quick we are not how big we are um, because we don't know what's around the corner, the disruptions that are impacting our own business, et cetera. So that, that speed, not just of action, but, but speed to be able to make a decision and, and crack through processes that could have taken so long in the past is it's breaking down that. And I think you're right when you said it's, it's a, it's the mentality first. So, you know, what, what, I mean, can you, can you kind of go back to a point where you had an epiphany around this? <laughs> Uh, in, in your own um, trajectory as a leader? Definitely. There's a couple of things that um, really kind of stand out to me. First and foremost, I think I was quite lucky in that when I did my design degree, we spent a lot of time looking at um, different ways of thinking. And re you know, at the time, you're thinking, this all sounds a bit, a bit ethereal. And it was to solve design problems. Uh, and that's, that was what I was being trained for, which is great. But that breadth and um, not filtering things too quickly when you are kind of going through brainstorming ideas it, it served me really really well in, in business so first of all I would say that and the other thing was with the branding and design business I saw over a period of probably about four years the footfall into the office from clients declining um, more and more they would prefer that we visited them and various people within the team would also be saying can i do this from home can i do that and it just got to a point where i thought right we're carrying significant overhead here that we just don't need people will be happier to have the, the flexibility of work from home and um, do some stuff co-working space even do a few days together you know in somewhere um some sort of office shared office space something like that clients we go to them because that's what they want um, and did that and never really looked back. Got to be honest, got happy clients, happy team. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really worked well, I would say. Oh, thanks for that. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. So really, again, great learning that you can apply, of course. Yes. Oh, yeah. um, and in the, these days, really, you have to because, as we know, it's uh, particularly when we're talking about an in innovative product like dress code, for example, and your cash cuff, you know, imitation is is the sincerest form of uh, flattery, so they say. However, innovation today is, a, is potentially a me too product tomorrow. So, you know, with that mentality, how do innovative organizations like yours in the face of what we could describe as hyper competition, yeah competition that exists today uh ones that may start up tomorrow how do you stay ahead of the curve and ahead of the game i, I th personally i think it's about never sitting back and thinking the job's done mm. it's just not as simple as that i think you know there's always going to be an opportunity to improve what, what you've done when now that improvement could come in lots and lots of different ways whether it's improving the environmental credentials around it whether it's improving the um, the working methods, you know, there's lots, lots and lots of things. But one of the things that I'd learned very early on is never kind of get to that point where you go, ah, done it now, because it just that just doesn't exist. Um, you know, whatever it is that you you've done and you created, 
that's great but you need to be then thinking about right how can we improve that and take that to the next level for the next version and while you're doing those journeys you're you there's also immense other points of learning and exposure to different things which come in and kind of give you other ideas and you know it it should be in an organic and an enjoyable, dare I say, you know, experience doing all this sort of stuff because, you know, you're starting from a, a strong core and and you know, expanding out, but keeping keeping grounded and keeping realistic about stuff. You know, not not letting any success go to your head, saying right, this is great, but what can we do to kind of make it even better? What can we offer that's going to make these people even happier and and you know, add more value. There's, uh, there's always something more to do and we're always going to be learning and developing and going forwards you know that's that's just natural it's evolution and as you, as you say starting from that or continuing from that strong core and mm. always asking the question what next yeah. is the mentality it's a men- it, it is a mentality as you said before about that sort of yeah. leadership mentality that needs in place because that's then infectious for the rest of the organization uh, for your customers who are expecting, um, and and it can propel you forward, surely? Most definitely will propel you forward. Um, and, you know, the speed at which technology is moving at the moment, I think it I don't, doesn't matter what sector you're in, what products or services you're providing, things are, mo- are moving at incredible pace. So, you know, there's going to be better, slicker, more innovative ways of, of delivering and producing whatever it is you're doing. Um, it's just simply a case of keeping your eyes open to those, embracing them and, and physically going out there and, and challenging people, you know, within your kind of ecosystem of what you're doing saying, well, this is pretty good how we're doing it now, but if, have you had ideas about how we might do it even better? Um, and nine times out of 10, you know, people are, share those, those values because you tend to find the people you're working with are, are a similar sort of mindset and thinking along the same lines to yourself and they'll say oh funny you should mention that we've been looking at this and we're exploring uh, this new avenue and then you start start, start saying right well tell me a bit more and see how we can embrace that to bring that into what we're doing and you know it is collaborative it's about being digital first but yeah having that kind of mindset and sharing that that vision to keep challenging and keep pushing forward I think is really really central to everything. And it does go to show you, as as we've been saying, the the importance or perhaps how more important now the human touch is within the digital era to bring every on, everyone on board with that journey and give everybody a part to play. So that it can drive that innovation, creativity, generate ideas and contribute to that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, at the end of the day, as, as great as technology is, if it doesn't connect with human values in some way, shape, or form, then it's going to always just be a little bit, a little bit out there, a little bit disconnected. Um, you know, mentioned some pieces of technology that have come and gone in the past that didn't quite succeed, and that's that's always been just down to whether or not they made that that strong human connection or not. Um, and unfortunately, the ones that don't, you know, they they go by the wayside. Sometimes they actually have the better tech in them it's uh, yeah it's just one of those things but yeah there's a lot to do and um, it's a fascinating time to be doing it i think right well, and the point the point you make there is interesting you know forbes and uh, ibm did a study around digital transformation and it kind of talks about it, defining the strategy was all all very well but by 2018 they're saying that 84% of execution was failing and that's because Potentially, they were looking at the technology and the digital piece, but they were missing this this human touch, and that bringing together really helps, and really kind of formed the glue, if you like, of then moving forward into what that meant for the culture of the organisation, our customers, uh, being more data driven. Yeah, I think as well that's something that um, I get involved in quite a lot with the branding business. There's a lot of companies out there that are doing fantastic tech innovation. And they're really deep into that, quite, you know, quite passionate and it's their world. Unfortunately, they've forgotten that the rest of the world don't understand that tech like they do. And it's that bridging piece to make sure that, you know, the normal person on the street understands why that piece of tech is going to be great for them. What's it going to do? What's it? What difference is it going to make to me? 
when when you speak to someone technical they'll give you all these fantastic pieces of jargon and um it means a heck of a lot to them but it doesn't to to the majority of people and that's that's the really really big piece you know getting that across making sure there's people within your organization that are fantastic at that the technical piece but equally there needs to be someone that can take that in really really simple terms and say this is the point of difference that this makes to you mm. Um, mm. and you know if you haven't got that then you need to get it outsourced it's because it's it's completely critical yeah yeah simple and brilliant like cash cuff that Thank you. expresses it exactly isn't it the innovation and the way to explain it and what it means to me intuitively as much as then when i get the key messages from you too. So this has been a, fanta a fantastic and fascinating journey, Andy, throughout how you've innovated within your design business, within the fashion stroke fintech company, let's let's call it, yeah. uh, your, your leadership journey, as well as the people journey that went along with it as well, and how to stay ahead of the game. So perhaps to, to end our journey, if I ask you as a leader, considering your own journey what are the two or three learnings or pieces of advice that you could share with others that may help them fast track their own journey um, my first one would be to just try things you know we've we've touched on it already during this uh, interview that it's never been easier um to to do these things to to fast track stuff through and just try it you know you've got ideas you've got got thoughts do something with them you know, get them validated with some data, try them, test them and, and measure it. And you'll, you'll, you'll be able to find that. But as we've said, make sure you, there's a, a strong human need and connection to whatever it is that you're producing. You can't just produce it for producing its sake. Whilst the technology might be impressive to people, there's got to be a, a reason for it existing. You know, that would be my, my top one. Um, gosh, other things, other things. Hmm. I think the other one of the other key things I would say is team. Um, make sure that you find people who share your passion and interests and will support you no matter what. Right? You know, having a strong team of people around you is incredibly powerful. Um, it's yeah, it's it is the set, central to to everything that that we do uh, across both businesses is that that team communication piece and you know. To, to what we're doing now there's never been easier ways to join people up so it's it's really really important um and if i was to do a third one gosh um, putting you putting you in depression now yeah i think that probably this is going to sound a, a little bit um contrite maybe to some people but i think it's really important to think about working on your business not in it it's really easy to get sucked in to the day-to-day -to -day delivery um, and there will always be things that are going to try and pull you back into that side of the things but if you can keep yourself slightly distant from it it gives you an amazing amount of headspace to look at things a bit more analytically not be quite so emotional uh, in the in the connections that's not that you don't care it's just that you've got to have a little bit of distance to give you that thinking space so that you can you can take that bigger over, overview because when you're actually involved in the day-to-day -day, uh, delivery, you you can be quite sort of um, blinkered in terms of what's happening with the bigger picture stuff. So it's it's a tricky one uh, without a doubt. And I think every kind of founder uh, has this dilemma, particularly you know because you've been with it from day one. But as things grow. That, that sort of stepping back and thinking about what, how we're going to keep this innovation going is, is more important in many ways than worrying about the minutiae of the delivery because there will be other people that can do that. You know, you need to keep pushing the innovation piece. So, so really, in, in summary, it's give it a try. Yep. It's surround yourself by people who will contribute to that and take hold of it and run with it. Yeah. And by empowering them actually to do so, that gives you the time to take a step back and keep that strategic eye, that eye to the sky, as well as yeah. your feet on the ground when needed. But <laughs> yes. that, that is important uh, basis. And really the first point in modern day businesses, as we've seen when we went through the, the recent pandemic, that very fast acceleration into dispersed working which was not normalized at that point mm -hmm. because we mm -hmm. had other priorities as well 
and you had to experiment to get it right. Uh, and I, I love one of my partners uses uh, uses a great term. Like he says he keeps saying we need to move from PowerPoint from creating PowerPoints to creating prototypes. That's what we need to do. And that's it. And he is talking about the team from that point yeah. of view as well. Yeah. We need to empower more, create leaders at all level so that actually our executive leadership can keep that eye to the sky and yeah. keep us going in that that direction and navigate the course in the speed. Yeah. So Andy, look, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great. So many, so many great messages and learnings that have come out of this. So how, pe- how can people get in touch with you if, they, if they'd like to connect? Sure. Um, you can connect on LinkedIn. You'll find me, Andy Boothman, on LinkedIn. Uh, if you want to find out more about Dress Code, uh, we're online. So that's all the W's, dresscodeshirts.co.uk. Um, and we hope to hear from you soon. And thank you very much for your time. Fantastic. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you for joining our guest practices video cast. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel through the link below or check out our website to access more in our current series of expert interviews.